What's going on guys? This is Chandler Smith and today this video is going to be with my beautiful wife, Maddie Smith. And we are doing a one year update since she was diagnosed with colon cancer. It's been a lot of ups, a lot of downs, um, but Maddie finished all of her treatment and we've been told everything is looking good. And so we're really excited to give you that update and kind of work through the pros, the cons, the ups, the downs, and really hoping that other people that end up in the same situation that Maddie's gone through this last year, that they'll have the opportunity to see this and realize that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. So with all that being said, let's jump into it. All right, so um, first thing, I guess, how are you feeling? Feeling great. <laughs> One whole year down. We, filming this right now, it's, we're what, five days from when you went in and maybe just give like the quick version of how we found out, how you got it, and those first couple weeks of going through all that. Yeah, so last spring, probably around March, I started noticing some blood in my stool and I'd go to the bathroom. Um, but I had no other symptoms. I assumed it was some intolerance coming on or something. Um, so I pushed it off. I ran a triathlon that summer. Physically, I felt great. I mean, I, maybe I felt tired, but you know, I had two little kids. Um, but then finally on September 17th, I got in to get a colonoscopy um, and it was posted to me by my doctor. It's like, oh, you know, it might be early onset Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, um, which is a bummer, but it's manageable, but let's just, let's diagnose you for sure. Um, and yeah, I remember waking up from my colonoscopy and him just being there saying, I wish it was one of those things. And he said, you know, it, we sent your, you know, the tissue off to get biopsied, but it does look like cancer. Um, and then we kind of stewed on that over the weekend. And then on that following Tuesday, it was confirmed that it was cancer. And then luckily we had an incredible network of doctors that were working together really quickly to then get us in to meet with a surgeon and my oncologist. And I was in that Friday for my surgery to remove the tumor. Yeah. And through all of that, it's kind of, I mean, I didn't expect anything because mm -hmm. the doctor downplayed it. Um, I knew you were a little worried about it, but she just ran a try. It was just so unexpected. And that morning mm -hmm. getting that news was like, how is this well, even Especially real? when they come to tell you that it's late stage three, you know, it, it didn't make any sense that I could be as asymptomatic as I thought I was and get that kind of a diagnosis. Yeah, the other thing that made it super crazy for our family is my brother had been diagnosed with Hodgkin lymphoma three weeks, three or four weeks, four weeks before we got this news. So we were just really reeling with that. Um, and then getting this news, it, I mean, it's just like two, you're literally my two best friends, both having cancer, just crazy. So I think, I think you got the short end <laughs> of the deal out of anybody. <laughs> It was not, not the best. Yeah. Um, but yeah, rushed into surgery. You, the one thing you forgot is after getting her surgery, because we we really pushed to have that moved up. They wanted to wait, and I'm like, no, we got to get this yeah. out. Yeah. So we pushed hard, and we got into surgery immediately. And then you had an allergic reaction to the chloroprep, um, and so she got this gnarly rash that spread like all over your your belly. It was coming up in your chest. Um, and that was one of the worst parts of it. The surgery Honestly, actually yeah, went really well. Yeah, I mean, the recovery for that's hard. Um, you know, it's a major abdominal surgery. I had 12 inches of my colon removed. Um, you know, and I think it's just kind of learning this new body that you have and, you know, it's your digestive system, you know, figuring out how to eat and what you can eat again. And, um, you know, you kind of feel like a baby again, where you're like learning how to go to the bathroom and all this stuff. But yeah, that that was an unforeseen um, obstacle was my allergy to that. But at least then we knew, so that didn't happen again. Um, but yeah, once I was, let's see, they allowed me four weeks to recover from that. And then I had the surgery to put in my uh, chemo port. Um, and then two weeks after that, I started chemo. I think the other thing that at least I found interesting is after getting my brother's news and then your news and then, you know, some of those things with the allergic reaction and all of that, every low I'm like, all right, 
I can't handle lower than this. And, and then, I, it's, it's true. then something else would happen and, you know, we'd push through and I can't imagine being you. For me, it was hard and I wasn't doing Again, it. Again, I, I think it's worse for family members or the loved ones that are having to stand by and watch and care for them. Because at least for me, I felt like this slight bit of empowerment because it's like, oh, it's my body. Like at some point I can control this a little bit. Um, but then I remember us thinking like, oh my goodness, what if it was one of our kids or, you know, and I pictured like, what if this was you? And my brain like immediately went to a worse place than myself dealing with it. I don't know if that's how it is with um, other families or, you know, companionships that have gone through it where maybe the caretaker feels worse. But so I'm kind of curious to see if that's kind of a popular dynamic with people that have been diagnosed with cancer. It's very different hearts. Yeah. For sure. Um, but yeah, then you jumped into chemo, which seems crazy because all that we went through at that point, especially, I, I keep saying we, <laughs> but all it that was, you went it through. Was we. It um, was we. All that you went through to that point was a lot, but it seems so little because we had six months of, of you doing yeah. treatment. I guess pros, cons, anything you learned from, from that experience for anyone else that maybe has to go through chemo? From chemo? You know, I, I remember going on Amazon and after I had this like three hour appointment um, where they accessed my port for the first time and I kind of saw how that was gonna work and I remember her just handing me this binder and I had just these pages and pages of all my chemo drugs and side effects and have this on hand in case this happens. And, you know, it was that slight bit of, I don't know what's gonna happen, but I do know that if I have the, the, the mouth sores, if I have this, I wanna have everything I need. Um, you know, and we're getting ready to move and I'm cleaning out all of our stuff and I'm finding little things that I bought that I never ended up using, but that was kind of an empowering part for me um, to just feel like, okay, there's a lot that's out of my control, but at least this is in my control. If I'm hit with this or this, like, I'll, I'll have what I need. And I was pretty convinced that at the beginning. And then obviously, you know, new symptoms come and symptoms come and go and you kind of, you know, you adapt and get what you need. But um, I think overall, just going into it, feeling like you're prepared, um, but also acknowledging the fact that every single person reacts to chemotherapy different and every chemotherapy is so vastly different. Um, and yeah, I think, I don't know. It's kind of, that ignorance is bliss mindset is actually kind of nice going into treatment because you just feel a little more at peace knowing I'm gonna go into it, but maybe I don't know to what extent. For you, um, I don't know, what's been the hardest part during and then the hardest part after finishing treatment? You know, I, I'll start with after treatment first. Um, I didn't, I, I mean, when you go in for treatment and you meet with your doctors, you're told your list of physical side effects you might deal with. And while you're going through treatment, it feels like day in and day out, you're cycling between an array of different illnesses, you know, whether it's some sort of stomach flu and now you have a sunburn and then you have this, it's like, it feels like a different sickness every day and you, you deal with it. And I feel like your mind is so busy dealing with that um, and kind of focusing in on, okay, treating the symptoms, you know, what can I do? Let's keep food in my stomach. Let's keep doing this, 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 that you don't really have time. And we didn't really let ourselves kind of spiral mourn or, or, or even mourn. think about it a Exactly. Lot. But I remember it was about a week after my 12th cycle of chemo ended. So it was technically three weeks after my last infusion. I remember, I think I was in the shower and suddenly I like, it just, it's weird. It's like, it hit me. Like what just happened? Like what, what did I just deal with? And I remember just sobbing and it was weird. It's almost like it was this out of body, like I was there consoling myself kind of thing where you just, you, I don't know, I didn't realize how hard mentally after treatment would be. Um, and that's something that I struggle with still. Um, you know, I didn't really pay much mind when they said, oh, there's, there's counseling resources and there's this, but 
you know, it, it's, you just still feel like something bad is being dangled in front of you and you never know if it's going to happen. You don't know if it's going to come back. Um, we've had a couple scares and, you know, you feel, you feel a cough coming on and my, my immediate thought is it's in my lungs or, you know, and, and that, that's hard. It's a hard way to live. And day by day, I do feel like getting slightly better, but that, that's hard. And that's been a reality for me. Um, I don't know if it's like that for everybody who's gone through treatment, but the mental side of things, I had no idea how hard it would be. And some days it feels harder than physically going, like receiving chemotherapy. It was definitely fascinating to me how much harder it's been after. And I feel like every day it gets better, but those first couple weeks or even a couple months after you finish treatment, when you're in treatment, there's that next thing you've got to prep for. It's yeah. like, this is your week where you're feeling decent so we can go and do something as a family. And then we know next week's the really bad week with treatment. You're just like very present. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard when you start thinking future and slip into worst case scenarios. And you know, every time since that you've had a cough or a stomach ache or a weird bump or whatever, like instantly your brain goes to that worst case scenario that you've lived and having to yeah. do it again. And, so I wish I had like more advice on managing that. I haven't found like the secret to that yet. And I do think it'll always kind of be a part of me, which, you know, it was that bodily awareness that got me in to get it diagnosed and fixed in the first place. So I'm never gonna discount things, but I've used the analogy a lot with you, with other people of, you know, at some point, cancer will be like driving in a car. You know, every time you get in a car, there's that possibility like, yeah, you might get run off the road. Yeah, you might get T-bone. Yeah, you might get in a fatal car accident, but that's not your initial thought. And for me, I know at some point when I get my next, you know, seasonal cold or whatever, like I, at some point, I know it'll get there to where I'm like, no, it's just a cold, like this is normal. And I know it'll get there and maybe it just takes time. And I'm only, what, five, five months, almost I think six months out of treatment. So it's one one year. So, so like five four, months. Four or five. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so it's still it's still fresh. I mean, you know, and I, I I do believe it'll get better with time because it's slowly but surely it has over the last couple months. Yeah. Okay. Next thing, um, we've talked about a lot of the bad, and the bad's been hard, but um, let's talk about the good. You know. Yeah. Because um, I really feel like for both of us this experience has like drastically changed the way we look at everything. Mm -hmm. um, but for you, what have been the biggest positives? Because I know, you know, I, both of us are hoping people that are maybe at the front end of this are watching it. Um, and what are the positives that we've got out of it or you've specifically gotten out of it? I think first and foremost, like you physically feel better. You know, I didn't, realized that I was sick, you know, and, uh, but you just had that overall feeling of just, I'm just unwell. Like I just, I just don't feel like I'm performing at kind of top level. And I did that triathlon again this, this last summer, about a month ago. Um, and I took some time off of my PR from last year, which surprised me at first. Cause I'm like, man, I feel like I'm so I tried training for this so many times throughout the summer and I just, I still had lingering neuropathy in my feet and my feet kept falling asleep and I would try to run and all this stuff. And, um, you know, we were thinking about it and it's like, I didn't have a, you know, a, a mass, a tumor in my abdomen this time. I didn't have cancer coursing through my body this time. And, you know, I'm like, oh, that, yeah, that, that makes sense. I'm sure that affects people's ability to perform in any capacity, especially athletically. And so I, I think first and foremost, you just get feeling better. Like physically, you just feel better. I know mentally is kind of a different story and you work through it, but physically you do just, you feel good. And there's a day that you will feel good again. And that was something that I know if I could see me now, like February or January and, and could see where I'm at now, I would, when I was just feeling so sick, I, I would be really excited. And so I think just know, know that you will feel good again. Um, that's, that's one of the best parts. I think 
just to add on to that, and we've talked about this a lot, but just all of the changes that it's had you make, not only for you, but for our family, mm -hmm. when it comes to our diet, when it comes to um, our sleep, when it comes to the things that we're coming in contact with, yeah. and just really prioritizing your health, for one. Um, I think, too, just the way we've chosen to live. There have been so many things where it's like, do we want to go do this with the kids or do we want to just veg today? And we have definitely chosen like, no, we're just going to send it, you know? Yeah. There's definitely, um, <laughs> I've definitely wanted my fair share <laughs> of veg days though. <laughs> You've been going and going this summer and sometimes I'm like, okay, I just need a break. But it's, it's, it's true. And I think, you know, way I kind of covered this, I, I think on our last video, but it just, it can happen so fast. I mean, I went from having no idea in you know that anything was wrong and then seven days later i'm recovering from that surgery and knowing i'm walking to six months of chemo and that's seven days time and sometimes it happens even quicker than that with with some people and some people's different types of cancers and so you know I, I, as cliche as it sounds, maybe live like tomorrow you're going to get a diagnosis, you know, or someone you love will. Like do, do, what, do what makes you happy. And just to add on to that, I, I feel like I wanted to know there was stuff you could do or I could do to control it. And there really is from your health, your exercise, your diet, um, their, your mindset, especially there's so many different things that I feel like we found that really did help. And that's not to say that people that, you know, lose this battle didn't do something right because I don't believe that either. But I do believe there's so many things that you can control. And I wanted someone to tell me what those were. And so I would just say, like, you can control the situation and you can do things that mentally keep you in a good place. Um, I don't know, is there anything you'd add to that? I think, no, I just being proactive with how you live your life in every facet. I mean, you just like what you said with what you eat, how you spend your time, you know, what you're putting in your mind, what, you know, what you're expressing. I, it, it all, I know it all works together. Um, and we definitely weren't perfect at it, but you know, I like to think we did something right, you know, since, you know, things have so far been going okay, but. Well, and I think I so badly wanted to see the good. You hear so many statistics, but I just wanted to see someone else that had been at that low, low and made it through and that could just tell me, hey, like, it's going to be a sucky year, but you're going to be okay. And I just feel like that's the truth. Like we're there and it doesn't get easier, but it, it really has been incredible in so many ways. And we just keep pushing through and you hit the one year, which felt like it would never come. And we'll hit the three year and the five year and the 10 year. And then it'll be something that it's hard to remember. And I know our dentist got the same cancer as Maddie. And you told me this week after meeting with him that he said, sometimes he'll have those moments where he's like, man, I've forgotten it. Like, I don't want to forget it. I don't want to forget how grateful I am for where I'm at. And that's one thing that we have both talked about. We don't want to forget. Mm -hmm. Any advice you would give to someone who has just gotten this diagnosis or maybe their family has gotten this diagnosis? I think first and foremost, it, it sucks. Like this sucks. I agree with you. Is it fair? No. Like, is there any reason why this should have happened? No but it did and now at least for me what helped was okay what's the battle in front of me right now let's get this surgery done what's now let's recover what's now get used to your port what's now prep for chemo get it done what's now first infusion second infusion third and then you just keep going and at least for me being able to check those little things off every week, every couple weeks, every month. That that was really um, exciting for me. And, you know, watching time come and go, as much as we, did, we didn't want to wish time away, you know, experiencing Christmas with our kids and 
and Valentine's Day and, and all you know those fun holidays, but um, there's an end. It, it, there is an end in sight and it is very likely that it's gonna be a wonderful ending. And it's not like it's not gonna hurt and suck to get there, but it'll get there. And just like what you talked about, trying as hard as you can to keep your mind in the right spot and keep a level head through it all will, will really help. And one thing maybe you'll wanna add to this, but I feel like, and this helped me a lot, and I think you've told me it's helped you, but picking things on a further horizon than the end of treatment that we visualized, we thought about, we looked forward to. And I know two big ones were you doing the try and just like, I don't know, even weeks before the try, it's like, am I even gonna be able to finish this? But all through treatment, we thought about doing it and beating your time and you did it and you beat your time. And, um, and that was just like a big motivator of like something bigger than just getting through, but like, crushing it you know yeah and then also just out boating with the kids and spending that summer and just having it be awesome i feel like for me those two things were like when we get low we'd be like no the try or the boating or sorry <laughs> okay. uh, i don't know if you felt the same about those things but i i did i did and then i think after you know when all that hard stuff is done there might still be hard things i you know whenever i look on my calendar and i see a a checkup or a scan coming up you still get that pit because it's like i've gotten bad news before and will this be the same um you know but i think talking about it and not you know suppressing stuff and i know we've done our fair share of talking about it and sometimes it's nice to have a level-headed we kind of go back and forth being the level-headed one. Yeah, maybe that was the real key is having a slightly unstable husband that when he hit his lows, you stayed motivated. <laughs> that by must have been it. We definitely switched off throughout it. Yeah. And yeah, I, I think that was big. Yeah. Okay, well, I think we're at the end. I just had one more question. Okay. Because we've talked about the low lows, but I... I wanted you to tell me just briefly what you remember is like the lowest low and then the highest high over the last year, like the actual moment. I would say the lowest low, I, I remember the day and it was, it was, I want to say like four days before chemo started. I had my appointment and they tried out my port for the first time and they did, it was that like three hour appointment where she's just going page to page explaining all your symptoms that you're going to have and all that. Um, and at that point, you know, I'm still recovering. I still, I'm, the, the rash is still, I'm on like week three of prednisone and all this stuff. And I had a bad chest cold at the time too, that they were worried about, oh, let's get a CT just to make sure, you know? And I remember, I think I was FaceTiming my parents. You took the kids and I think you knew like, she's, she's, snapping right now and I just remember being so sad because it felt like I had just been punched a thousand times and the biggest fight hadn't even happened yet and I had no idea what to expect out of treatment um you know and it's just that it was that first day after everything that after finding out that I just felt the most sad and I wonder if people, when they've gone through treatment or right when they found out if they can like pinpoint a day. Um, but then highest high, I, I think I can't like select an exact moment. And I think that's the part I like about it. Um, we had tried, I had tried wake surfing last year, like one time, horrible at it. And we went out in the boat the first time, like in June and I tried every single time we went. I have half the lake still, I know, just up <laughs> into my head with how much water I took on. And I tried so hard every time and I am not good at all. But looking at like pictures or videos of the beginning of summer to now, I'm like, 
oh my gosh, like I just went through treatment and now I'm like taking on some new skill that I didn't even know I was gonna wanna try to get good at or you know, cause I'm not good at it, but it, it was just, that was cool. So I look at things like that. I look at, you know, we're coming up on that one year mark and there's a lot of anxiety with it. We, we pulled our son out of preschool. He'd only gone for a couple days. Um, you know, but I picked him up today and he's just so excited and I'm so excited for him. Cause I'm like, cause we're good. Like nothing else is going to happen. Like today was a high, high for me. And there's just been a lot of little things like that, that, you know, there's not, there's not one big moment. It's not like I walked out of getting disconnected from my chemo pump the last time and it hit me. It was just, it's just been a culmination of, you know, when we sat on the beach, we went to Hawaii a couple weeks after I was done with treatment and I'm like, man, I feel like garbage, but I'm here and this is so cool. And our, I get to see our kids play in the sand. And I just, I, I, it's just like what we talked about. Like there's better days ahead. And it's all those little things that sitting here now, I'm looking back at the last few months of, you know, recovery and, and detoxing from the chemo and all that. And I'm like, there's just been a lot of good little moments that I think all kind of shoved together just make an overall just good life, a good summer, a good time. Um, I think that's cooler than just one big high, you know? Well, I think that's perfect. I think the only thing I would add is if you're watching this video and you or your family is dealing with it, it's gonna buff out. It will. And it'll get better. Yeah. So those that watched the whole video, thank you. Um, and have a good day. I'm a wiener. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs>